Hey, um, I want to talk a little bit about a well-known um, cryptozoology case, um, widely dubbed Bigfoot or the Sasquatch. And I want to particularly focus on uh, a famous film that's connected with this, arguably the most famous moving footage in cryptozoology history. And that is um, footage that was taken in 1967, possibly earlier, but the uh, um, two people involved claimed it was 1967. Um, at uh, Bluff Creek, which is a tributary of the Klamath River, Humboldt County in Northern California. Now, the two people involved in this were um, um, Roger Patterson and Robert Bob Grimman. Grimman, excuse me. Um, there is an interesting channel online, uh, Think Anomalous, and they had a very good uh, summary of, of this case and some of the counter arguments against it. Um, what I find interesting, though, well, basically, the case itself, um, they, as they were coming to this creek, they were on horseback. Um, Patterson was actually an amateur Bigfoot hunter, so he had been on the trail for suspected um, Bigfoot sightings in the area going back to 1958. Significantly, though, um, the 1958 material, i.e. footprints, was a well known hoax by one Ray Wallace. Anyway, um, they uh, they saw this creature walking on the other side of the creek and um, it was some sort of hominid. Initially, um, on first appearance, uh, it, it looks like it could be a gorilla or some sort of hominid. Now, one significant factor of this is the the framing. Apparently there was over 900, 954 frames made. The famous frame is frame 352, which is when the creature turns around. In that, it has mammaries, which uh, then leads to a conclusion that it was female. Um, but the framing issue is very important because, according to photography experts, the speed of the framing, i.e. how many frames per second, would have an influence on how the uh, gait of the creature is perceived. So people who allege that it's a hoax may be looking into the gait from a perspective of um, the speed of the of the um, camera. In other words, if it had been slower, you would see a more natural um, natural posture. Uh, what I find interesting about this case is that. It's been widely analysed and probably just over half of the scientific consensus suggests that there is actually something to it. Now, those who allege that there was a hoax, um, Patterson died in 1972 of cancer, but until his death, he, he insisted it was real. However, those who allege that it was a hoax, one of the factors they cite is that he had been acting somewhat strangely. He'd withheld money from his colleague, um, Gimlin. And he had sold the distribution rights, which would suggest certainly rather dubious behaviour in order to mark it off the, the fame of the case. Nevertheless, he did maintain its uh, genuine nature up until his death. And his associate, um, Robert Gimlin, has also insisted that he's now in his 80s. He still insists that it's, it's real. In the 1990s, there was a guy... Um, Bob Hieronymus, who claimed he was in fact a man in a suit and he was the, the figure seen in this footage. Um, and he's underwent all sorts of analysis over his claims. He says the reason he didn't come forward before was that he had hoped to profit from it and he was worried about being prosecuted for fraud. But he then came forward because his lawyer advised him that as he hadn't made money from it, he would therefore not be subject to prosecution. Um, there are some claims in favour of his claim that he was a hoaxer. Um, I'm just reading here from Wikipedia. Apparently his relatives, his mother and his nephew, claimed to have seen an ape suit in his car. Um, a long-time friend said that he revealed the hoax privately in 1968 or 1969. 
and there's been other claims to that effect. Certainly a hoax can't be ruled out. Um, one thing I do find a little strange is how relaxed the creature seems to be, insofar as when it turns around, it shows no sign of fear or apprehension at all. That's a little bit strange. Um, if you have a creature that has first come into human contact for a long time or ever, you would think that, you know, looking at characteristics in the wild, that is a little bit unusual. It seems to be too relaxed. Certainly gorillas um, are very secretive, private sort of creatures. Although I think it's a mistake to weigh too much on this being a conventional primate. The whole point about unknown species is there are new things to learn, so there may well be evolutionary traits in this creature that simply haven't been seen before. Just because they're not conventional in nature doesn't mean it's not true. Um, so there's been experiments conducted if this could indeed have been a man in a, in a suit. And uh, a big focus has been on the posturing of it. In other words, could a man in a suit be able to make the sort of fluid movement that this creature is making and the gait that it is making? Well, apparently Partisan brought the footage to um, motion effect specialists at Disney and other studios. And they said that without control conditions and without a great deal of training, it would be very difficult to replicate what they see in the footage, which again gives testament to this possibly being genuine. One thing's for sure, in 50 years, um, there's still huge question marks over it. Bob Hieronymus, um, his claims to have been the hoaxer um, have never been proven. Uh, the natural question is why would he claim to be the hoaxer for fame? Who knows? Um, there are also contradictory um, claims about the sort of suit that he was said to be wearing as opposed to the alleged suits that were in Patterson's possession regarding um, whether it was made of horsehide or dino. Um, so there's a lot of questions around that. The Wikipedia article is very concise on this. But basically, um, yeah, it's it's an enduring mystery. Now, there have been other sightings in recent years. This isn't unique. It's by far the most famous, but it isn't unique. And I should say the original footage is lost. The footage that we now see is copies of that original footage, amounting to about 58 seconds. Um, there have been footage in recent years shot mostly in North America. Um, there was a famous photo from Sarasota, South Florida, of a creature that was coined the skunk ape or ape skunk. Um, and this creature seemed to me to look a lot like an uh, angry orangutan. It was basically the posture of it looked like an orangutan. It was a creature that spotted um, in a woman's backyard at night time. I think that may well have been an escaped orangutan, and they would need to look further into that specific case. I.e., the natural question is, did any local zoological garden uh, report an escape? Um, there have been other sightings. One that I find very intriguing is by um, a guy, I forget his name, Josh something. He was basically going through a woodland area, and he came across basically a Bigfoot um, or a creature very similar to the one in the Patterson Gimlin footage. And he recorded this for about a minute and a half. Then as the creature stood up, he got scared and ran away. Now, why I think this is sincere, at least sincere in what the guy thinks he saw, is that, you know, hoax videos usually are very sensationalistic. Now, with his video, it's, I need help to identify this. He's not saying, I definitely saw a Bigfoot. It's, I need help to identify this. That makes me think he's certainly been sincere about it. In terms of running away, people criticise that. But, you know, if you, if you encounter a wild bear or a cougar, of course you're going to run away. It seemed like a natural human response to me. There was another, uh, there was another video footage of a, a family who seemed to be French or French-Canadian because they're speaking in French. And they noticed a creature on the other side of a riverbank and when it kind of howls or growls, not at them, but at something else, they also take flight. So there is archive material out there, and a lot of it certainly is intriguing. I'm going to close with a few thoughts. I think there is a possibility that this could be a subspecies of primate that maybe migrated to North America. Just because there's been no hard evidence of great apes in that part of the world, because of the out-of-Africa theory, 
you know, Neanderthal um, originated in the Neander Valley in Europe um, doesn't mean that just because something isn't widely documented it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I would say, though, if, is if there is some hominid species out there in the remote forests of California or Canada or other parts of North America, I would say it probably is incredibly thin on the ground, probably a few hundred individuals or less because otherwise we would have seen a lot more sightings, plausible sightings since 1967, and that hasn't been the case. It may even be that this was the last of its kind, and they actually saw the last individual species, individual hominid. It, it shouldn't be presumed that because something is assumed to be extinct or doesn't exist, that that is the case. There have been examples of animals in the wild which were deemed to be extinct, and they have been rediscovered in recent years. So it's not completely implausible. One of the theories about the Loch Ness Monster is partly because that is such a deep lake um, that it is a plesiosaur dinosaur that survived extinction events. Um, so there is a possibility that the sort of evolutionary events that led to the dying off of Neanderthal species and other uh, pre-Homo sapien species could have skipped this part of North America. Who knows? Um, so there's a lot of intriguing questions. Anyway, I'll put a link to that channel, Think Anomalous. They've got all sorts of interesting videos. And I'll, um, yeah, I'll put a link to their video here. And also that other video with the guy who shot um, the footage. I think it's very interesting. That's only a few years old. Okay, let me know your thoughts. What do you think?